Hello, my name is Stefan Bollmann and I welcome you to this update on the ADAT project and Neurodesk, where we build a cross-platform data analysis environment for reproducible neuroimaging. Before I get started, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are situated on. For us here in St. Lucia, these are the Turabal and the Jagara people. And I pay uh, our respect to their ancestors and the descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. As researchers, we have access to a large ecosystem of scientific software, which is often written from researchers for researchers. So often these are not maintained by software developers, and this causes a couple of problems. One of them is that our analyses are not that reproducible because we depend on certain underlying libraries and updates in these libraries. For example, here, the floating point precision in glibc causes significant differences across analyses, and these are actually not part of the data. It's purely computational reproducibility problems. So scientific software can be quite challenging for researchers. Most tools require Linux, um, but they're not installable via the standard package systems because no one packaged them because we're not software developers and we don't have time to do this as researchers. So of course, people then say, well, just go and compile it from source. It's easy, right? But the problem is we have quite old operating systems on our high performance computing systems. And these antique Linux kernels, they can cause some interesting problems when compiling software. Then we also end up with conflicting dependencies. So we can't easily move our software between operating systems and it's very, very tricky. And reinstalling these tools on different platforms takes a lot of time. And this is time where we can't do research. And as I showed, we get differing results between software versions. So we need to be able to manage our dependencies very well if we want reproducible results. So the organic solution that we see in many labs around the world is that people just buy different computers for different studies. And this is not very good because this is not very cost efficient. Uh, when hardware fails, studies have a big problem. It's not very secure because these things are not patched very well. And this is just a nightmare for an IT department. But this is how currently science is done. So we want to change this in the ARC ADAPT project. This project is one of 60 new ARDC platform projects funded in 2020. And it aims to build research-oriented platforms that enable researchers to collect or generate data and do this in a fair uh, manner. And ADAPT is the national platform for reproducible electrophysiology data analysis and sharing, accessible to all Australian researchers across a wide range of disciplines that conduct electrophysiology research. The project is led by Tom Johnston in Swinburne and managed by Paris Lyons in Swinburne as well. And today I want to talk mainly about one part of this project that I'm mostly involved in, which is Neurodesk. Together with a great team of Angela and Ashwin, we build this technology platform that enables us to do reproducible neuroimaging. And how do we want to achieve this? Well, first we looked at what technology already exists and what can we use and what should we not reinvent? So there are already package managers like Conda, NeuroDebian. So for example, NeuroDebian takes neuroimaging software, packages it for Debian system and distributes it. The problem is if you're on CentOS, you're out of luck. There is container technology like Docker and Singularity, which could help us a lot with our dependency management. And then there are, uh, for example, cloud systems like Nectar that we should be able to use and utilize. And then there are existing platforms like the Characterization Virtual Laboratory, CVL, which provides desktop on high-performance computing systems where what we develop should nicely run on and we should be interoperable with such services. So, when we then looked at this, we said, these are our design principles. We want to run on Linux, Mac, and Windows. So for this, we said the best technology right now is Docker. We want to run on HPCs. So for this, we currently need Singularity. It should be interactive. It should be a full Linux desktop interface, and it should not restrict what researchers can do with this. It should be lightweight. Tools should be installed on demand, and it shouldn't be a really big 150 gigabyte container or virtual machine that's very hard to upgrade. It should be small components that can be quickly exchanged. And we should re reuse existing technology wherever we can. We are only a small team that develops this, so we shouldn't reinvent anything there. 
So in the end, we aim to do and make new neural imaging analyses findable. So we want to describe them. We want to make sure that it's very well documented. We want to make it accessible. So what we build should run on any compute platform that researchers have access to. Just because you're at a different university and you don't have access to a certain cluster shouldn't prevent you from getting access to the system. It should be really nicely accessible for everyone. It should be interoperable. There should be clear interfaces where we can work with other services and make most use of what we build. And it should be reusable. What, what we build should be baselines for other developments in the future and also reusable in our own projects. So because of this, we came up with um, a layered approach of building this. So our architecture starts with NeuroDocker. NeuroDocker is a community that builds Docker recipes for neuroimaging software. So they figure out how to install neuroimaging software in Docker. Then we take these recipes and we build them with an automatic CI CD system on GitHub Actions. And then we host these containers on GitHub, on Docker Hub, and we build singularity containers that we then host on object storage because for singularity containers, there's currently no good repository out there. Then we build an abstraction layer around this that we call transparent singularity because researchers don't necessarily want to deal with the complexity of running a singularity container. So singularity exec and singularity shell, these are commands that some people don't need to learn. And they're just confusing because they're already using workflow systems that necessarily don't, uh, don't handle these containers. And they want to be able to use this on a cluster, for example, Slurm, uh, ideally without changing the commands they have ever run. Then we build another layer around this, where we combine now the tools from multiple containers, again, in transparent fashion, that enables us to build very complex workflows without building large monolithic containers. So what we can do is we can build small dedicated containers, handle the dependencies very nicely, handle the update very nicely, and then we combine them on another level. And we make all of this nicely available in a desktop environment that's very easy to install and run. So this gives us three points of entry. Developers can directly use our containers and they can use our containers as a base image for their containers, or they could directly use them on cloud or whatever they want to do. So we really not restrict people in, in, in what they could do. Advanced users can directly use our command line interface. They don't need to, to deal with our desktop or anything. They can directly continue what they are doing, but just change and use our containers. And our command line interface will help them manage these containers. And if people don't want to uh, deal with all this complexity, they just install our desktop and everything is set up and working. And I will show this desktop in action in a few minutes. So the entry point for this is our website, neurodesk.github.io. If you go to this website, you can see how to run this. And let's just do this. So let's go to this website and uh, I'll open this here in the browser. So you get to this quick start menu where you can see, uh -huh, we have Linux, Windows, and Mac. Here I'm running on a Windows computer. So let's just click on that. Now, one dependency that we have is Docker. So we need to have a Docker installed. I already did this previously because it takes some time. Now, the only thing we need is we need to copy this terminal command. This is a Docker run command with a couple of uh, storage options and port forwardings and a certain version of this image. So when we start that, it will start that container. And this container now contains a full desktop interface and it's currently starting up. And in a few seconds, we get a link that we can just paste in our browser. So let's do this. We'll grab that link open a browser and paste it there. So the cool thing of this is that we don't have to install anything else. We don't need a desktop client. We can just completely run in the browser. So this also means we could run this on an iPad, right? So we're not dependent on a computer as an interface. Um, now here I opened a storage folder and you see there's currently no data in this environment. But what we did is we linked the local folder to this Docker container. So here I'm just drag and dropping some data into this directory. And once I refresh, this data directly appears. And this is also quite a high performance way of accessing data in our environment. And now I can just start any tool that we build in there. And 
this is doing something really cool. The, this visualization tool that I just selected is actually not installed. So this is now going to our CVMFS servers and it's pulling down the binary components that it needs to run this. And this is now started live from our CVMFS servers, uh, this tool. And the user didn't even realize this and we can just down, uh, just load the data and just start working. So there is, uh, that, that's all that's required. It's really nice, transparent, fast, performant, and secure because we're currently just running on our local platform. Um, and that is really, really cool. So in a nutshell, Neuro Desktop is everything we need in a 1.25 gigabyte Docker container. It's based, based on Apache Guacamole, uh, which gives us this cool browser interface of this. We tried Nova C, but we were not very happy with the performance, for example, clipboard and the desktop performance as well. Our only dependency is really Docker. That's all we need. We support RDP and VNC, so people can choose whatever they prefer. And then we, we have 200 gigabyte of neuroimaging software that's delivered in unpacked singularity containers on demand via CVMFS. And if you want to know more about this, how this works, join the Birds of a Feather session of the ArcCos group. So the ArcCos group, I will give a talk about this, how we set this up, why we build it, how we build it, what we learned in the first year of operating this service. So I already showed, we just map local directories nicely just to keep things simple. However, we can also use cloud storage, Arnet Cloud Store, own cloud, next cloud, our clone, Globus. So we put all the, the things in there that we use in our daily life. And the cool thing is now that we can take this environment with us. We can run it on our notebook. We can take it to our lab workstation where we have a little bit more power. If we're done with all the visual stuff, if we don't need anything there, we can just go to the custom or we can directly run in the cloud. And our container is so small and performant that we can run on every free tier of the big cloud providers out there. So it's also the community likes this a lot. So we ran, for example, a teaching course in 2020 where we taught data processing of fMRI and the students loved it because they could take home this environment and they kept using it. Um, the desktop container was already pulled 1800 times during the last 12 months. Not all of these are individual users, some updated their container, but this shows there is definitely a good uptake there. And we have lots of interactions on GitHub and we see this from labs in Europe, America and Australia. So let's look at the second component of this project, electrophysiology. And this is led by the team in Swinburne. And what they're working on there is a tool called Sova Beats. So Sova Beats is a graphical user interface that enables researchers to convert their data from EEG raw data sets to this brain imaging data structure. And if you're interested to know more about this, visit the, uh, the poster uh, this afternoon from Jorgen and uh, talk to Jorgen. He has a lot of uh, cool things to report what they build in this project. And this was a Google Summer of Code project and they did an amazing work in that project. So last but not least, interoperability. This is led by Ryan Sullivan at the University of Sydney. And here we are building interfaces between XNet and for example, BrainLife with our ADAPT containers and our ADAPT platform. So with this, we want to enable people to move from interactive workflows that we support very well to automatic workflows. It can just run after you acquired your data or that can run on these cloud platforms like BrainLife. And with this, I want to give a little bit of an outlook what we're currently working on. So of course, we're working on getting more neuroimaging containers integrated in this platform. And here we're working very closely with the community to, to help us build the containers because we don't necessarily know what people want to work on. So here we really take in whatever we, we can get. We would like to support GPUs. Uh, and deep learning workflows and prediction workflows. So here we're looking into, into making this a reality. Also, we want to work on a graphical user interface for managing this container, because you saw in the beginning, I had to copy this terminal command and paste it into a PowerShell. This is not what a lot of people are comfortable with. So we just want to wrap this and make it really nice. And again, just hide that complexity from the user if they don't want to deal with this complexity. And then currently, everything we build just runs on normal CPUs. So we're not yet supporting M1 and the ARM processors, but we already got a couple of users who would like to do this. So with this, I'm at the end. And I thank you for your attention. And I thank everyone involved in this really cool project. Um, if you think this is cool, 
join our community. If you're not even a neuroimaging person, you think this could be useful for another domain, definitely get in touch. We're very happy to help them and, uh, and support other use cases as well. So with this, I'll invite you to become part of this community and I thank you very much.